I'm very excited that we're here today, and thank you all for coming. And I'm going to introduce Connect Cabinet. Thank you very much. Uh, a very special welcome to all our adult guests and an extremely warm welcome to all our pupils who are representing their school here today with children from Adamstown Castle, from Esco Educate Together, Newton East and Brookline Valley. You're all very welcome representing your schools and I'm delighted uh, that uh, you are all here with us today to launch this um, common enrolment system. So the idea behind it, of course, is to promote inclusive local schools. That's the rationale behind it. Uh, the system itself is, as Peggy said, it's a new coordinated admission system with the, de with the design to promote local inclusive schools. Did that not happen? Oh, oh, me move. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you, want to move over here. you don't have to be too polite. <laughs> Um, I might take a chair. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes, that's a bad idea. Thanks. Um, so there are the four schools we know who are involved uh, with, with the system. Four of the local Educate Together schools have um, come together. And as Peggy said, we are seven years actually teasing out all the possibilities and the permutations, how it might work, who are we being fair to, who is going to be included in the schools. It has taken an awful lot of teasing out from... Uh, boards of management from uh, principals coming together on a regular basis to say what is the best way forward for our students? What is the best way forward to make sure that we are being as inclusive as possible for our local parents? And what is the best way forward to build strong local communities and to build strong local schools? That's why we want to do this. And we believe strongly, as Peggy says, passionately, that what we have come up with which is not an, a, a knee-jerk reaction to anything. As I say, we're a long time at it. We've been studying it a lot, and we've been working towards offering a practical, common sense, and fair approach to enrollment. Now, it's a new approach, so that means it's an end to the first come, first served uh, policy that has been in use for, in Educate Together for a long time. And you know, the first come, first served was devised a long time ago in a very, very different Ireland to the Ireland we have today. And we feel strongly that that system is no longer a valid system to promote uh, inclusion in our schools or to be fair to parents in, in, in our area. So just a little bit of background, the 1998 Education Act obliges boards of management to establish and, and maintain admissions procedures, which provides for maximum accessibility to schools. So the onus is on boards of management, not on patrons actually, but the onus is on boards of management to be responsible for the creation and the upholding of, uh, of their enrolment policies. And of course, schools do that, keeping the ethos of their uh, patron in mind. But it's the board's responsibility and their duty. So the very interesting thing about enrolment policies is all schools, all schools in Luton, I can guarantee you, to you will take children all children who apply, whatever their religion, whatever their ethos, once they have room. Enrollment policies only kick in when schools become oversubscribed. So the question is, with an enrollment policy, it's not so much about who you let in, but with an enrollment policy, who can't get in when your school is oversubscribed? Too many people come into your school, wanting to get into your school. How do you decide to decide who are the people the winners who get into your school and who are the people who don't get into your school. So that is the type of thing that we've been discussing, as I say, for, for, for seven years. So our rationale, as we say, is we want inclusive, integrated local schools. That's what we feel Educate Together is about anyway. We want them to be inclusive, we want to be integrated, and we want local schools. Now, the history of Lucan is a burgeoning mobile community, lots of newcomers in the community. You know, uh, the Department of Education recognised the need in the last seven years to actually open five new primary schools. That's an awful lot of new provision for schools. We've had three Educate Together schools, one Catholic school and one community national school, all open since 2007. So that's an awful lot of children that are being catered for in this new, uh, new situation that, that we, we have in Lucan. But what really, what's really interesting and what has got us started on this whole thing about enrollment policies is what's really interesting is 
the five new schools, whatever their patronage, whether they're Catholic, whether they're educated together, are community national schools. The five new schools have really, really high percentages of newcomer families in their mix, in their composition. So what is the reason why the new schools have 95%, 90%, 85% of newcomer families, and the local um, established school may have 15% or 20%? And these schools would be in very close proximity to each other. So what, what caused that? So what caused that was uh, enrollment policies. So what we're concerned about here, and the rationale for why we wanted to change something about what was happening in Lucan, is that the school composition is not representing our local communities. So we'd have two schools, they might be within one kilometer of each other, and they would have very, very different compositions in their makeup in terms of Irish children or newcomer families. Uh, so we felt that was something that, you know, we can't really say we're Educate Together if this is happening within Educate Together schools. Of course, it's not just Educate Together schools, it's happening uh, across patronage. But as Educate Together schools, we decided, well, we can't really stand over a situation that is leading to this kind of an outcome. So we said, this is our rationale. This is why we're, what we're trying to look into, to see what we can do about it. And the, the reason that we have, the reason the five new schools have such high numbers of newcomer families are people who've moved into, not only migrant families, but people who've moved into areas recently. Uh, a lot of people in rental accommodation, there's a lot of, you know, mobility uh, in Lucan, is that parents who moved into the area had huge difficulty with enrollment. Now, so if you take, say, for example, uh, say uh, a, a Muslim parent from Syria, say, for example, or a Hindu parent from India, or, you know, uh, uh, an atheist parent from the United States, any of these people who move into Lucan, and they're living in Lucan, say, for a year or two years, and they say, their child is four years of age, and they say, oh, I've got to get my child into school. So there's lots of choice in, uh, in, in Lucan of different types of schools, and lots of parents. Um, now, some parents are very, very strong on ethos, but a lot of parents just want a school for their child. They just want to go to school. So a parent might turn up at a Catholic school, and they, they put their names down, and the Catholic school says, sir, can you put your name down? But what happens is uh, the Catholic school, by their enrollment policy, must cater for Catholic children in, the, in the, the parish first. They must do that by law. So if they can take the child, they will take the child. But the, child, uh, the newcomer child in those cases, if they're not Catholic, are at the bottom of the list. Okay, so they might get in there. So they go to the Church of Ireland school. The very, very same um, thing happens. They're at the bottom of the list. They may get a place if the, the school has places, but the school is obliged to give um, priority to children of Church of Ireland or other Protestant communities. Okay, they go to the Grail School. The Grail School might be a runner. Uh, you know, first of all, Grail Schools often have children who've been to the Nina first, have access first. And also, uh, it mightn't be the best option for a newcomer parent anyway. They might want their child to learn English first. That's okay. So then they go to the Educate Together School and they say, well, surely, you know, educate together the quality of access for all people. Well, that's okay, except they can't get in either because they, go, they turn up to the Educate Together School and they say, well, put your name down, you're very welcome, but there's 154 before you. So they might not get in there. Either. So that's what happened back in 2007, and it's happening since. When the department realizes there's so many children that need places, they open a school, and we're so lucky. I mean, we have beautiful schools. We have ourselves. We got our beautiful new school last year. We have really good schools, really beautiful schools. But uh, when the new school opens, it is the children of migrant parents, or children of parents who you know who have moved into the area, who can't then get into their local school. So the new school then has to cater for the children who can't get into their local school. And then you have schools where there are very, very high percentages of migrant people, alongside a school that has very small percentages of migrant people. So that's something we don't feel that we can stand over, uh, that, we, that we can allow to happen. We want to have a level playing pitch for all parents and all families in a moment. So it doesn't matter to us whether you've lived in Lucan 
for five years. I've lived in the youth for 20 years. I have lived in Newton for one year. We feel that if your child is opposite us there in the school or near us, they should be able to get into their local school. And uh, that's, the, that's why we want a common enrollment system. Professor Kathleen Lynch, now I just, I just have one quote on this. She's a, a professor of sociology in UCD, and she's a very, very strong supporter of Educate Together and has been her whole life. And in 2004, even before Lucan became such a mobile, you know, uh, you know she wasn't talking about Lucan, I was talking about uh, enrollment policies in general. She was talking about the Educate Together enrollment policy back in 2004. And this is what she said. You, I'll read it now because it's very small. She was actually launching, she was at an Educate Together function. She was launching our uh, Learn Together curriculum. And she said that we need to be very careful. She was talking so highly about Educate Together. But she said, the bit, one thing that I want to warn you about is that your select, selection criteria, our enrollment policy, we need to be careful. It does not act as discrete selection mechanisms for the exclusion of particular groups of children including those from working class backgrounds, those who are nomadic, or those who are the children of migrant workers. So way back in 2004, a professor of sociology was saying, maybe it's time to look at first come, first served. Maybe it isn't the most fair, inclusive policy that we always felt it was, or always talked about as being e equality of access for, for everybody. It's not really that equal. Uh, remembering again that it is enrollment policies that are designed to keep people out rather, as much as to take, take people in. But uh, it's not just about school composition for us. It, that's, a, that's a big thing, but the integration is a, is a big thing. But it's not the only thing. It's also about families and about communities. We want schools to be able to represent their local communities, whatever the mix-up of the local community is. We want that. We want to make sure that siblings are in schools together. We have so many parents in our in our school when we were talking to them this morning who drop one child to our school and then well no they go to eddie school first because he opens much earlier than us they drop the child to eddie school at 20 to 9 then they go through the traffic to drop another child to, to my school at 20 past nine then they're back at two o'clock in eddie's and back at mine then they go to a secondary school it's madness it's absolute madness uh the crisscrossing over and over families not able to get into school together we want families to be, you know, to be proud of their school, to feel their school, that this is our school, not to be divided between two schools. We've had situations, in fact, where three children have been in three different local educated together schools, and we, we want to try and eliminate that as much as we can. Peggy talked about children walking to school with, the, with their, with their neighbours. We think that's really important. We don't want to have children you know on one street where half the children go to this school and half the children go to this school because these children were unable to get into the school that was their local community we feel really strongly that if parents choose an educate together school that they should be able to get into their local educate together school and you know we we, we feel it'll help to ease traffic in Luton. that's way down our list of priorities but it, it is something that we we, we want we want we think it will be helpful for that a little bit in brief about the mechanism, uh, as uh, Nina is going to talk um, in detail about, about our, the Aladdin system, and uh, Peggy, we're delighted that people from Aladdin have been here with us today. Uh, they're the premier, the first, uh, the biggest uh, database, primary school database in the country, and they told us this morning, how many schools are you? 1,250 schools, and they're really only around for six years, 2010, so they're... they're, they're we're very grateful, and they're doing this uh, pro bono for us as well, so we're, we're, we're really excited about that. So uh, central application, so for parents this is helpful. You're not going to be going to the four educate together schools and saying, I'm going to put my name down, where am I in the list in that school, where am I in the list in that school. You go to one school and you go down your name, and it goes into a, a central application. The year prior to entry, so you can only apply from October 1st today, First, from today, you can apply for 2016. You can't apply for any further years, so you can't put your two-year-old's name down, you can't put your six-month-old down. We had Martha Dooling told me once that he had a parent on his way home from the, on her way home from the hospital coming in to the... Isn't that right, Martha? That's right. Yeah. That's right. On the way home from the hospital, came in and said, get my name. Can't do it anymore. You would be... The year prior to entry is the year that you do that. 
So the criteria, um, we will have about 250 places between the four schools. Uh, I take two classes, Tom takes two classes, Eddie takes two, and the Moss will take three classes. So that's about 250 places. Now, uh, the thing again is, well, how do we decide which 250 are successful? If 300 people apply, 50 people are not going to get a place. This is what enrollment policies do. So our, our big thing, we've talked over this for so long, and we did all sorts of um, discussions and debates with parents, with our parent bodies, with our boards of management. Age. If 300 people apply, the oldest 250 will get a place. And the reason we decided, in one of the four schools, they would be called, they would get a place. The reason we decided that was because at the moment, a child who's four, four years and two months, or just four, may get a place in the school over a child who's five and a half, who can't get a place. And the five and a half year old child may have just come into the community, into the, or, or maybe not, maybe their parents just didn't know. They might be living in the community for five years, but their parents didn't know, actually, I need to get my child's name down. So we don't want the five and a half year old to lose out for a place for a four year old. And the simplicity and the beauty of that is, the four year old will be five next year, so they will go to the top of the list next year. So for us, we feel the oldest children to get a place is, uh, is the fairest. After that then, as we take the 250 oldest children, siblings, they will be allocated to schools where they have siblings. And Mina will talk more in detail about this now. I'm just giving you the principles that we worked on. <coughs> Our third principle then is local schools. How, where you live, the nearer you are to the home, the more likely you, to the school, the more likely you are to get into that school. So there are three principles. The oldest children, families together, and uh, proximity between home and school. Now, when we're talking about this, people say, oh, like that's wonderful. It's wonderful that you, you, you take the oldest children, and it's wonderful that uh, families will be together and that it will be in your local, local school. But then somebody always says, well, what if I don't want that school? What if I want that school? Or, you know, I, so it's the, the, the individual choice of the parent here is what, and we're going to tackle it head on. We've, again, we've been dis discussing this ad nauseum for seven years. First of all, we're spoiled for choice in Liverpool. We have Catholic schools, Church of Ireland schools, Gael Skolna, Educate Together schools, and Community National schools. So there is so much choice that people in Lupin are much more than in, in, uh, in, in most communities. So we're spoiled for choice in Lupin, is the first thing to say. The second thing, when I'm, I've been studying, as Peggy said, I've been studying um, about these sort of issues. And choice, they say in the literature, choice is kind of a, a poor word. So it sounds really nice. Of course we want parents to have choice. Of course parents are the best people to decide what school their children should, should go to. But choice has consequences. So this is the at individual level, first of all. So we, we might say, and I, I don't even know whether I agree with this statement, but we might say that Parental choice is, uh, is the most important thing in education. But we have to say, you have to go back to the situation of who does choice favour? So some people get their choice, but nobody ever says, what about the people who don't get their choice? So when you have a system where people are choosing schools, again, we have, say, 100 people apply for 50 places. Who gets their, who gets their choice? 50 people get their choice. So we say, okay, parental choice works there doesn't work for the 50 people who don't get their choice. So at an individual level, it doesn't work very well. And we know, we know from literature, but we also know from what happened to Lupin, that the people who don't get their choice are disproportionately newcomer people. People who do get their choice are disproportionately Irish people. Now, as Educate Together Schools, I don't think we can stand over that. That's the first thing. The second thing about choice is that there are consequences of choice. There are consequences at a global level or a more, a larger level. That unregulated school choice has led to segregation in schools across Europe. In Copenhagen, Amsterdam, London, Paris, dare I say, Lucan, Swords, Belbriggan, Galway. 
all of these all of these places have what has happened in those areas is that new schools, I explained it earlier on, new schools in the area become schools for newcomer families. And we just don't think that's something that we can stand over. And we don't want to stand over it. So the, the, if unregulated parental choice, if parental choice is the first and the most important thing then, you can be guaranteed that segregation will happen quite quickly. And that's what has happened in Europe. And like, if we see it coming, I think we have to say, well, look, Let's, let us try and do something about it. And as I say, as Educate Together, can we say, okay, it's fine, look, parental choice is fine, but if, if, it's, if this is the outcome of it, is it fine? Well, it's not fine, and we didn't feel it fine. And the four schools, four boards of management, parent bodies in those schools, they say, no, it's not fine. Educate Together, you know, we stand for something different. So we're the first group, group, group to do it. And as, yeah, so the last point is, Parents still have choice. Parents choose the Catholic school, they choose an Educate Together school. That is their choice. So they're choosing into Educate Together schools. And we have four fantastic schools in Lupin, in, in this project. There are four fantastic schools. We've all got beautiful buildings, we've all got beautiful premises, we've all got wonderful, vibrant principals. <laughs> we've all got magnificent children. Look at them here in front of you. We've got really great schools. We're all proud of our schools and we know, like, I can recommend any school. Uh, we can all recommend our, our schools to one another. And the other thing is, not, not only that, but you are, as a parent, you are much more likely to get into your local school. This is what the system will do. We're not saying, we're not going to be sending you way across there. We're going to be, we're going to be allocating you to your local school. So I'm nearly finished. And we're, we're summing up inclusive local schools. That's what we want integrated schools, that's what we want. One access point, helpful for parents, greatly helpful for our schools. So all of our schools have lists of like 200 children and they're on every school in, in, in Lupin. Um, so for us, it's, it's much more um, streamlined and helpful. We know, we know who's on the lists. We don't have hundreds of children who are also on somebody else's list who'd be going there and causes terrible trouble with enrollment every year. A big point, we feel it's much fairer for all parents. So it's, it levels the playing pitch for all parents. It's family friendly, it's community friendly, and it's environmentally friendly. That's what we want. We're promoting <coughs> inclusive local schools. So that's uh, me finished.